This man doesn't eat properly, stuffed the spoon under his pants, rubbed it on the sole of his shoe, then called the prison guard, told him that his spoon was dirty, he needs a new one. His companion took one look at him and knew what he wanted to do, followed him immediately, under the cover of his companion. Sure enough, he took an extra one. In fact, this spoon is also the auxiliary tool for their escape. The main tool was the nail clippers on the warden's desk. When the warden turned around and he took one, he had not thought of escaping from prison. After all, this prison was known as Alcatraz, surrounded by sea on all sides. The water was swift, and the guards are also twice as many as other prisons since its establishment. No one had ever successfully escaped. Until that night, Morris found a large cockroach. A cockroach means there's decay. And this prison was built on an island. Over the years, it's been exposed to salt water for a long time. The steel and concrete were probably in disrepair. So Morris snapped his nail clippers on the wall twice. Holy shit, this is a tofu project. He was overjoyed. The next day, he found three of his buddies and plotted his escape. The general plan was to cut a hole in the wall, climb to the roof, and then escape through the outer wall. That's easy to say, but there is a two kilometer wide channel to cross. Without life jackets and inflatable valves, it was certain death. Luckily, one of them worked in the raincoat department, said he could handle the inflator valve. So it seems that the success rate is not small. The four of them hit it off. Two men in a group cross cover. One is cutting the wall. The other one is on lookout. At first, Morris was looking forward to it, chiseling with joy, and the skin came off quickly. But as time went on, not only did his hands wear off a layer of skin, and the speed is getting slower and slower. He is afraid to chisel until he is released from prison, cannot finish chiseling. In order to save strength, he had to increase the length of the nail clippers. So there is the beginning of the spit spoon scene. But how to weld the spoon and nail clippers together? Everyone in here is talented, he asked Anglin, a librarian to help him. This Anglin once also tried to escape, but he was caught and broke his leg. It was impossible to run again. But for Morris's attempt, he was still very supportive. He told Morris to find a coin, scrape some aluminum powder down and heat it up to weld them together. So Morris used a week's worth of dessert to get a coin from Booth. He used a nail clipper to rub the coin with aluminum powder. Then he poured it on the handle of a spoon and heated it up. As the temperature rose, handle and nail clipper really welded together. It became a jailbreak device. Morris took it for a test run. Sure enough, the efficiency of chiseling the wall improved a lot, but not long after the patrol guards smelled the smell. Fortunately, Morris heard footsteps in time to react. Plus the cell was dark. Even the guard did not notice the tools dropped on the floor. As soon as the guards left, Morris went back to chiseling. So at night he chiseled the walls with all his might. During the day, when the wind was out, he spread the wall plaster outside. After a few days of hard work, finally the entire wire fence was exposed. But then came the problem. The two ends of the wire fence were tethered to the iron clasp. No matter how hard he could pull down, what can we do now? Looking at the whole prison, there is only one place that has the right tools, the wood shop. So Morris volunteered, and inside he found a nondescript wedge. He is sure they can cut through the wire with this. But how do you get past the metal detector? He didn't have a good idea, so he walked right through. Of course, the guards caught him red-handed, but Morris did have a good excuse. He said he just wanted to take it back to make a coat hanger. The guards didn't believe him and confiscated it on the spot. Morris did not say much, he just went back to his cell. It turned out there was another wedge he had hidden in the bottom of his shoe. He played a trick of hiding the wedge. Immediately, Morris used the wedge to kick open the barbed wire, but he couldn't get the wall to look like this. He had to disguise himself in order to cope with any room inspections. And that's where Anglin, the librarian, came in handy again. He soaked the magazines Anglin sent him, glued them into the shape of a box. He also asked his teammate Frank to ask the prison guards for brushes and paints. He put them on the heads of the people tied with paper and then put hair on them. In the dark environment, this fake head is enough to pass off as real. After all this he went out of the hole, climbing along the pipe to the top floor. Here from the rooftop there is still a layer of barbed wire, and the height of more than 2 meters cannot reach. It looks like we can only wait for our teammates to come up together. And at that moment, there was a guard patrolling below. It was strange to find Morris sleeping so early. Frank was trying to excuse Morris. He said he was not feeling well. The guard was about to leave. But then, by coincidence, the baton fell to the ground. The guard knelt down to pick up the baton, but found Morris was not moving. He felt something was wrong and slowly sat up and touched it with his hand. Fortunately, Morris had already returned to the room. The next day passed, seeing that the team was almost ready. So at night, he took one of his teammates up to the top floor. Through observation, he saw that there was a big iron cover on top of the wire mesh. To fix this iron cover, 
you need a drill rig. This thing cannot get ordinary people. Except Morris. He saw a small fan with a sharp eye, and an idea came to him. He asked Booth if he could help him get a drill. The old man has a wide range of sources. He asked him for a month's worth of desserts in exchange. So Morris secretly put the little fan. Put the fan in the case of musical instruments. When he got to the door, he offered to let the guard check it. The guard thought, who are you looking down on? So he checked Frank in the back. At night Morris took out the engine, made a small drill with a drill bit. In the dead of night, the two climbed to the top floor again, successfully broke through the big iron cover. But early the next morning, the warden came with the guards to make a surprise inspection, took his bed and went through the metal detector, and removed the box he was using to block the hole. Fortunately, the cardboard barbed wire was still strong. It didn't just collapse, but to be on the safe side, the warden was going to move him to a different cell. Morris realized that he had had aroused suspicion, so he called his partner and decided to leave tonight. At night, when everything was ready, the three of them climbed up the passage towards the roof, except for Frank who was next to him, because Frank was in prison for a term, so he lacked the courage to take the plunge. The three of them decided not to wait for him, pulling each other to climb from the vent to the roof together, and then along the water pipe from the outer wall to the ground. Then they ran all the way to the beach, prepared raincoat blown into a life jacket and inflatable boat, put them into the sea, and run away. Soon the sun rises in the east. By the next morning, the guards saw that Morris was still sleeping, opened the cell door and slapped him on the face. Immediately, the whistle blue. The prison was in chaos. Only Anglin smiled slightly and hid his reputation. This movie was made in 1979, based on real events. In the end, did the three men succeed? The film does not give a direct answer, but the prison warden refuses to admit his failure. He firmly believes that they have been buried at sea. This just became the biggest protection for them. Well, that's it for today's movie. We'll see you next time.